Good morning, everybody. How are we today? Good. What an amazing morning. Took my run around the Harbor Bridge and the, the Opera House and uh, crystal clear. So the only clouds are right here in this room. So it's very exciting to be here. Um, and, and fantastic turnout, as Richard said. Thank you all for taking the time. I know you're really busy. Uh, I've been doing this stuff for a while, as Richard mentioned. Um, been in the cloud for 15 years. And uh, there's a saying for us at Google, the average age is, is 26. If you're actually over 40, they call you a Greygler. So I am uh, one of the resident Greyglers, and good to see a couple of us in the audience today. And uh, with that, I, I've, I've got a reasonable amount of experience that I'd like to share uh, and, and kind of bring to life a lot of the vision that Amit was describing in his keynote. He has some really incredible insights and some technology and, and vision and, and, uh, and thought leadership from Google and that's being brought to and from us. But I think it's important, and why you're all here today, is to bring that home. And what does that mean for me and my business here in Australia or running my, my divisions around the world? So doing that, and, and we've synthesized a lot of these ideas around everywhere, everything, everybody, and being able to take those experiences that have transformed all of our lives every day and to be able to work the way that we live, to take that technology and, and work better together from anywhere with tools that we can trust. So I thought I'd take a quick step back. We've been looking forward. If you think about the business landscape and the context from which we're speaking, roll back to 1957. If you're an S&P 500 organization, you're a pretty staid company. You've got offices all over the country in the US, maybe around the world, thousands of employees, a supply chain, well-known brand. You know, you've been around, you're, you're, you're rock solid. Fast forward to this year, and on the S&P 500, the average age is 10 years. 10 years. So what that means is, is that everybody in the audience and us at Google, our competitors might not have even been born yet. And they're going to come in and transform and, and disrupt industries very, very quickly. So we need to be agile and dynamic to be able to, to take advantage of that kind of, of an environment. And, but it's really exciting, and it has some great opportunities. A really good example of a company that is, has transformed a market is a, is a gaming console called Oya. Has anybody ever used this one? That's a hand. It's funny, I gave this presentation at my daughter's school in Singapore, and there were three kids in the audience that not only had the gaming system, but were on, that had been investors in the company. They were 15 years old. It's insane. Anyway, in incredible company, bunch of guys in a garage in Los Angeles. Came up with a wonderful idea. Let's get this gaming console out there. But like many other startups, they needed some capital. They wanted to expand operations, manufacturing, do some marketing. So traditionally, or even in the not so distant past, they would have had to go to the banks, some VCs, maybe some angels, go on a road show, take some time, and get that money, and maybe you know, sell their soul in the process in a lot of cases. But the reality was these guys were able to take advantage of the forces in the market that are taking place now around cloud, social, and mobile to use a crowdfunding site called Kickstarter. So has anybody used Kickstarter in the, in the audience? No, amazing, amazing technology. So their goal was to raise a million dollars to get out to market. They were able to reach that in eight hours. Within a month, they already had $8.5 million raised, and they closed the offering with 64,000 investors. So what does that actually mean for the industry? That we now have a nimble, agile, amazing company with a great technology, with very little baggage, running on cloud mobile social, using nexus of forces that, uh, you know, that's common in the parlance. And they've disrupted the industry. So if you're Sony, Nintendo, Microsoft, suddenly you've got a bunch of guys in a garage that have some cash that are going to compete. So that has profound implications in the way we all think about business and, and the way that the business environment is transforming. So I, I like to tell people, I, I think I have the best job in the world. I mean, this is, uh, Google's an amazing company. I love talking to customers and, and speaking in front of crowds. And you know, I, I work in a region in Asia Pacific that is the fastest growing, most dynamic, most energetic place on the planet. And we have this amazing technology. And the numbers are simply staggering. And the numbers are the same ones that are driving this cloud, mobile, social nexus of forces. So 200 million smartphones were shipped in Asia Pacific in the first quarter of this year. 200 million. 800 million mobile workers, twice the population of the United States, will be mobile by the year 2015. And 50% of all new internet connections are going to happen in this part of the world. So it's staggering and, and a great opportunity. But in particular, for here in Australia, 
were uniquely placed to take advantage of this and to demonstrate leadership that you have done over the years. You know, Australia is a fantastic adopter of, of technology. It's already number four in internet smartphone penetration per person. Number two in tablet penetration. And you know, almost nearly ubiquitous internet access. 80%, and of course with MBN, that number is just going to go up. So clearly, great opportunities for all of us in business. So what that means is, and, and you heard Amit talk about you know, digital natives and digital immigrants, you guys have a, the demography here in the region and, and here in Australia, a whole wave of folks going into the workforce where they just expect to have access to these tools, like Amit's daughter or my daughter or, or our kids or, or our young people in our organizations. They expect to be able to take the technology and devices that they use at home and that are comfortable with and make them productive and bring them into the, into the workplace. Already we're seeing it, and we'll hear from Frank from Deloitte's, this, uh, a recent study from Cisco, that said two-thirds of university graduates are willing to take a lower salary to use the tools and applications that they want to use in the workplace. That's staggering. And already, as you can see in, in Asia Pacific, 70% of organizations have some sort of initiative around using their own devices, you know, BYOD or, or those kinds of things. This stuff is happening. And the onus is on us as business people to figure out how to enable it and accelerate it and take advantage. So we're really pleased, and you heard Amit describe our technology and, and our, our journey as Google and, and now in my group in, in Google Enterprise here in APAC. And you know, we are uniquely placed to help you on that journey. And that's what today is about and hopefully you know, future relationships that we have with your companies. We have an unparalleled consumer heritage. You know, the properties that we've got, whether it's Chrome or YouTube, Search, Google+, Gmail, we're talking about hundreds of millions, if not billions of users that people use every day and they love to use. And they consistently come back. The reason why we're able to do that, again, as, as mentioned before, is because we built out this massive scale. We spend billions of dollars every year to take the heavy lifting off companies like yours and off of consumers to deliver these experiences. But probably most importantly and most relevant in this room, is we understand customer success. The reason why Google has gotten to where it is, and, and one thing that is, you know, we're almost religious about it, is, is engendering trust, focusing on the end user and their success. So providing things like three nines in uptime, 24 by seven support, understanding how to deliver that, not, not just to you as our customers, but to your own customers as well. So you saw a similar slide um, globally from a MIT. But we are the fastest growing region in APAC, and Australia has been leading the charge for us as, as a major foundation country in the, in the region, consistently coming out with really, really innovative use cases that you're going to hear from today. Folks like Woolworths and, and uh, PwC, Landgate, Deloitte, Fairfax. All these companies have already been using us in a really robust way uh, that, that, frankly, is, is world leading, and it's setting out best practice for the planet. And we want to share that with you. We talked about the pillars around which that, we're, that we've built our applications and the usefulness and the, and the business value that we deliver around these, these five dimensions. Connect, visualize, build, find, and access. All key components that we hear from you that you need to be able to take the data, the mountains of information, the infrastructure that you've built, and deliver business value. So what I'd like to do now is just kind of double click down and build on the stories that Amit was showing and, the, and that we're going to tell for the rest of the day because again, we want to make sure that we make this tangible. You know, a lot of us go to these events and we've been hearing a lot about the cloud and what we're incredibly proud about at Google is we're making this real. And we have millions of happy customers already using this stuff and we want to you know, engender and stimulate a lot of innovation in this room and around, and around the world. So what do we mean when we talk about Connect? So you know, fundamentally, Amit's daughter, when she's reading a book or when she's doing Google+, or when my daughter is chatting with me on her Gmail, that is a, a social experience. It changes the way that I interact with my coworkers, with my customers. You know, we, we try to do that in my team now. You know, I don't think any of us particularly like to travel too much, you know, jumping on airplanes and being stuck in airports and missing our families. Being able to replicate that face-to-face -face experience is really powerful, valuable, and incidentally saves time and money. And we've been working with companies here in Australia and around the world on innovative ways to deploy that and connect people so they work better together. So you're going to hear from Woolworths, I'll talk about them in a second, but folks like Bunnings, Flight Center, Dick Smith, Fairfax, Vizzy, Ray White, all using this across multiple thousands of employees 
helping to drive business value, drive collaboration, and drive down costs at the same time. You know, we're, we're humbled by the choice that Woolworths has made, and we're, we're pleased to have them here to talk about it. Uh, an organization that employs 3% of the Australian workforce has decided to go Google with us. You know, that's a, it's a big responsibility, and we're, we're incredibly excited about that and well on our way in, in that journey. And it was a, you know, a top-down decision from Grant O'Brien, their CEO, through Dan Beecham, their, the CIO, and their whole team to inject innovation, to help facilitate collaboration, to enable employees that previously didn't have access to technology because it was cost prohibitive or they couldn't get to the devices. And you can see here from, from Dan's quote, he wanted his folks to work more efficiently, collaboratively, and effectively. He wanted them to have access to applications, information from any location using any device. So I won't steal any of his thunder, but again, this is a, an amazing case study globally for us, and, and we're pleased to uh, showcase them here in Australia. A great example in the US and, and, and for global companies thinking about taking this journey is a company called Shaw Floors. You know, a very conservative, old school, century old organization that builds floors in the southern United States. But they have manufacturing plants in, in China, they've got supply chains, they've got staff all over, uh, all over different states and distributed that need to share information. So they've taken the same journey, very similar to what Woolworths has done, to transform their business. So let's take a quick look at a video. Shaw actually started in the mid-60s. Our facilities and people have always been local, part of northwest Georgia. A lot of our associates have been here 20, 30, 40 years, and so they have a real passion for the business. You've got all these different moving parts, from sales and marketing, to manufacturing, to distribution, to the back office. We really want to make sure that the tools that we are providing are going to work any place, anywhere, anytime. Google Apps allows us to blend all of that way of working into one cohesive environment. I call my smartphone my mobile office. I was checking emails. I've gotten like 10 emails since I've been standing here. As I'm going from point A to point B, a lot of times I'm, I'm getting asked a bunch of questions, asking to follow up on different projects. I keep all of my project files on Google Drive and it allows me to either share or access that information. It just reduces the amount of work you have to do to share information with others. When we need to collaborate with other countries, we could be working at 8 o'clock in the morning and it's 8 o'clock at night in China and we'll start up a chat session with them and be able to collaborate with them real time on the same document easily and very fluidly. The miles between us don't matter as much anymore. There is a sense of community that's built that you can't get in email. Passion comes from the fact that people care about the business, they care about the customer, they care about each other. I think manufacturing is strong in Northwest Georgia. We're gonna be here 50 years from now and 100 years from now. My Australian accent sucks, but my southern accent's really good. I just love the way that guy talks. But <laughs> Shaw Floors, I mean, this is a fantastic example uh, of, of collaboration. And you heard uh, yeah, the money statement around the miles between us just don't matter as much anymore. And nowhere else is that more relevant than here in Australia. You know, previously, you know, the tyranny of distance was looming large. And suddenly, using these kinds of tools, it all disappears. And that's really an amazing advancement, and, and hopefully we can work with you on that. The second area that's really exciting, and I share Amit's passion for this, and we'll talk about it later in the day as well. You know, we have two of the most highly used products on the planet. Google Maps is embedded in a million websites around the world. It's the most highly used API in, in technology. Google Earth has been downloaded a billion times, the most downloaded piece of software. How many of you have Google Earth, have used Google Earth? So it's, it's, it's incredible and humbling to see that in a room. And the fact that there are amazing business applications, and you'll hear from, from Mike Bradford at Landgate today and, and a number of others, being able to unleash the two-dimensional data that is sitting latent in spreadsheets or in databases in your organization and put it in a visual form and running intelligent business decisions around that is, is incredibly empower, empowering and valuable. 
And that's a great differentiator that we've got and that you know, people are clamoring to us for. You know, organizations like REA, you know, Real Estate Australia is one of the most heavily used websites here. Billions of, of page views every year. You know, it's, a, it's a national sport, of course, real estate. And you know, a key component of that experience is the map. I'm on a two-bedroom house in Manly with a northeast aspect close to a school. You, know, you can't render that on a spreadsheet or in text. Seeing that on a map and, seeing, and being able to visualize it and move it around and drill into street view, that transforms the experience. And we're really excited about being able to do that. We've done this around the world. We also have a really uh, amazing product called Maps Coordinate that, again, is, is embedded on devices used, used on Android. And we have a, some fantastic use cases here in APAC. And there's a great one in the UK from Sutton and East Surrey Water. You know, a major utility in the UK, servicing 700,000 customers, over 2,000 square miles. I mean, these guys have to manage infrastructure and day-to-day -day operations. They have to assign and track jobs to a, to a highly dispersed workforce. And this used to be a paper-based assignment, handing out rosters in the morning, horrendously inefficient. But using Google Maps and Google Coordinate, they're able to then deploy in a highly efficient and optimized way their entire staff. So suddenly, in a short space of time, they were able to recognize a 17% increase in operational efficiency, and probably more importantly, a 500% ROI really quickly. So again, these are tangible business benefits, but also providing really great user experiences for, for workers and for users and for customers. So I've been really pleased to work with uh, SM, uh, sorry, FMG. Uh, I've, I've had the pleasure of going over to Perth and going to their headquarters. Truly a stunning company and organization, one of the largest mining companies in the world. They are at the, at the cutting edge of, of technology. Uh, they run in a business that's highly complex in mining. You know, there are a whole array of components around exploration and discovery, you know, drilling hole locations, looking after heritage sites. And they need to be able to manage that and visualize how to run their business in a highly, uh, in a highly efficient and visual way. So I thought I'd leave it to them in a video to talk a little bit about how they've gone on the journey with us to solve their issues. Fortescue started out as a bit of an idea. We wanted to really create some differentiation within the iron ore market, and then it grew from there. Fortescue is currently the fourth largest iron ore producer in the world, and we're really proud of that. Our biggest challenge was looking for technology to allow the construction team to see some of the challenges that they may encounter moving in such a mountainous environment. Google Earth has been deployed to the site to help users have an overview of the mining area that they're working in. It's a fair bit of guesswork with two-dimensional maps. You didn't get to see the terrain with Google Earth. Having everything three-dimensionally, I get a perspective of the whole landscape across our mine site. I love how I can twist it and turn it, see everything from each angle. I can see how large a ridge line is, where I can put the best access tracks in, and from then I can get a lot more accurate positioning. Google Earth has made my job a lot easier. It's easy to correspond with someone I can just sketch it on Google Maps, send it down to Perth, and they can see exactly where I'm talking about. Google Earth gave us the ability to manage all of our spatial information. Users are able to log on any time of the day and view that data to inform their decisions. We have a commitment to ensure that any ground disturbance doesn't impact heritage sites. With Google Earth, we can overlay up-to-date images of the cleared area and make sure that those cleared areas don't go outside green on boundaries. Fundamentally, we can actually see our whole operation within a very user-friendly, easily to access environment across the whole business. Being able to visualize our whole business, which is multi-billion dollars and spread across you know, a vast space of land is, is incredible. So we're really pleased to be working with, with F FMG. The third bit, you heard Amit talk about the royal wedding and, and some of the use cases around building infrastructure. I think it's, it's almost cliched now to talk about you know, using the cloud and, and offloading core assets and, and focusing on your core competencies. But yeah, we're seeing some amazing instances here in Australia of taking our infrastructure, leveraging things like our Google App Engine, Compute Engine, Cloud Storage, BigQuery, and of course our APIs, to be able to, to do things like Shoes of Prey. So uh, Shoes of Prey is, uh, is near and dear to my heart. I, I live in a house full of girls. 
they love shoes, and they, these guys have, have come out with an incredible application where you can take any model, design your own shoes, or, or take a copy of, of some existing ones, and send it off and, and have them delivered to your home. You know, pretty, pretty relatively simple concept, but complex to deliver, and requires a lot of infrastructure and analytics. So these guys are highly clever sales and marketing folks, and they have a little technology savvy, but they're leaning on us to provide the infrastructure to be able to offload all the server and, and, and the content and the storage and the API access to be able to deliver this great service and tweak it over time to build up. Likewise, we're working um, with Woolworths on a tap to support application for their iPads, for their store managers. We work with Ray White on a property management portal. So again, we're finding more and more folks who are saying, I'm a real estate company, I'm a retailer, I want to sell shoes, I don't want to have a massive IT organization. I don't want to be an IT provider to my own company. I want to be able to leverage world-class technology and infrastructure to be able to do that. So one of the areas, again, near and dear to my heart, and, and the, one of the great benefits of being at Google is we get to do things that, that change the world a lot. And Amit talked about the Malaysia relationship we built with the 10 million students. Um, We've also worked really close with the Khan Academy. Has anyone taken a course from the Khan Academy? Anybody heard of these guys? So Khan Academy is fundamentally transforming education delivered online, uh, both you know, preschool and, and, and tertiary and, and uh, sort of postgrad adult education. They, are, they literally support millions of users. They have, again, educators who are not necessarily technologists delivering a fantastic interface and an application across hundreds of, or dozens of countries. They don't want to manage the infrastructure. They have to upload 4,000 to 5,000 videos onto their site and deliver those in, in a really highly performant way. And they use our infrastructure to be able to do that. So let's roll the video and, and hear about how they're using. June 28, 2013. Dear Khan Academy, I am 72 years old, and I am now taking up learning where I left off. Thank you so much for all your hard work. Your team is doing nothing less than changing the world. Thank, Thank you. you. I always uh, knew I wanted to be a part of educational technology and Khan Academy is this chance to impact people's lives in a meaningful way and at scale. Khan Academy's mission is a free world class education for anyone anywhere and we're really, really focused on learner outcomes. Google Cloud Platform allows us to stay focused on those learner outcomes because our infrastructure has become this invisible layer that we don't have to worry about anymore. Google Cloud Platform is a pretty neat suite of tools that you can use to get your service running from supporting one user who's visiting per day to like hundreds of thousands and millions of users per month. We've had certain very large press events, you know, that have driven a lot of traffic quite quickly to our site and we have the support of Google. We're not going to be diving in and restarting a bunch of servers. Uh, it's, yeah, it's a comforting thing. As a developer on cloud platform, you kind of have a number of uh, dashboards built in that are really helpful. I mean, we can look at things, we can edit things. One of our core philosophies is shipping beats perfection. We ship every day and the transitions when we ship a new version should be seamless for new users. Google's put a lot of effort into making sure that the switch from the old version to the new version is, is well handled. You know, when we go run an experiment and make a small change to our site, we can increase learning for millions of students. And that's, uh, you know, we, you get these letters and you get these individual letters and that, that tells a big story. And then you think about the bigger picture of how many people are experiencing some of the, these changes. And uh, that's, a, that's a hard uh, experience to beat in terms of one's impact on the world. Know, really inspiring stuff. You know that. You know personally, it, it's it's inspiring as well. And my, both my parents are professors, and you know education has been talk. They've been talking about technology for years and decades, but you know we're finally seeing these sort of technologies and these sort of companies come to play, and it's great to be a, a, a part of it. Search is synonymous with Google and, and vice versa. You know, we, you know, we're very proud of of the usage and the and the number of users and the adoption of our search engine. You know, and being able to deliver results, sometimes before you're finished typing them in the box. But as Amit referred to earlier, the experience at work is very different. People spend a, a very large proportion of their time looking for stuff in their companies. And that just simply shouldn't be, considering how easy it is in the consumer world. So wouldn't it be great if you can use Google's algorithms and be able to plug them into your internal systems, your websites, and find what you need fast? And that, as Amit said, was one of the first things that we did as a business when people were asking us, hey, can we, can we plug this in and, and improve our, our own employees' experience? 
And here in Australia, some awesome companies that, that we'll hear from, PwC and, and Hilda are here to give, their, uh, to give their use case. We also work with Telstra, Foxtel, and the Aussie government to be able to plug in these appliances and run, run the algorithms and be able to optimize and tune to be able to allow people, customer service workers or, uh, or, or uh, knowledge workers to be able to get the information that they really need. So some great use cases as well and some compelling numbers. Hayes Recruiting, which is one of the largest recruiters in the world, significant presence here, here in Australia and around the region. These guys have a, have a daunting task. It's all about information and information retrieval. You know, they receive 30,000 CVs a day. And we've all seen them. They're very highly unstructured. It's hard to figure out, you know, or, or match them to different skill sets. And they've been able to, to build a, a fantastic application layer on top of our Google search appliance to the point where they were able to reduce by 90% the time searching for these documents and to look after their own clients. We also work with big manufacturers like Honeywell, Aerospace. You know, again, they have 14,000 users you know, dispersed across the world, and they spent a huge amount of time. It was taking them you know, 15 minutes for each individual query against their own systems. They reduced that by 97% to just 30 seconds. So you know, great business value being driven um, to be able to search effectively internally. And we talked about Chrome earlier. And this is like one of these crazy bets that Google has done in, in, in our past. You know, a couple years ago, we came out with a browser. And just like when we bought a little video server company or when we came out with a mobile operating system, people said, why, why are you guys bothering with this? There are already enough browsers in the marketplace. But you know, we didn't think that the market was being served properly. You know, we, want, we wanted a high speed, highly secure, very simple window onto the web to just re remove all the complexity of the back end and provide this great experience. And fundamentally, what this becomes is the window to allow your organizations to work simply and securely in the cloud. So this is changing the whole dynamics of organizations. You know, Woolworths is, is a big example on this journey, and they'll talk about it, Mal the Malaysian schools. Think about all the people that you could help or you can give access to information to if you could give them a device for a couple of hundred US dollars. That is simply, you flip the lid open, boots up in four seconds or so, they log in, they get credentials, and they're delivered exactly the applications that they need in a, in a, in a very short space of time. I mean, it's really compelling, and it allows for the kind of access ubiquity that, that we were looking for to raise productivity of companies. So nowhere is this more uh, important, and, and, and nowhere are we more proud to work than, than here in New South Wales with the Fireys. Uh, having rolled out Chrome boxes, which is an appliance where you can plug in a display and, and basically you know, render the Chrome OS and dive into a Chrome session. These guys have been using us around their, their whole organization because they, they, they like the form factor. You know, it was more useful for them and for their users than tablets. Felt like a PC, but you know, infinitely, more, uh, infinitely more usable for them, but also almost disposable, because of course they go into, into some fairly dangerous situations. And they were able to get their folks comfortable straight away. You know, it's a, a powerful, fast, minimal, minimalistic appliance that they've been using uh, you know, to save lives. And we're really pleased to be, to be a part of that. So again, I hope it gave, a, gave you a little bit of a flavor of the five pillars that, uh, and the five business values that we're driving around connect, visualize, build, find, and access. I think it's really important to reinforce throughout the day that these are the, these are the issues that we're addressing and we're hearing from you that, that you want solved. Now, the way that we do that is through a unique architecture. I've been in IT for like over 20 years and seen a whole bunch of different stacks and, and the rest. And I'm really proud of, of the way that Google goes to market, very much consistent with our own ethos around focusing on the user and everything else comes along, you know, providing fast, highly secure, open environments. And it's all pivoted off of applications. So whether it's unified communications, universal storage, productivity apps, maps, search and discovery, that's what hundreds of millions of people use this for in the consumer world, millions in the business world. And the reason why we're able to do this is because of our infrastructure, the billions of dollars that we spend and the, the talent and caliber of the people that we have looking after it. You know, our global data centers, triple nines, uptime, redundancy, failover, audits and certifications and security. And what this is allowing us to do is to nurture a really powerful and, and accelerating growth ecosystem around this developer community providing them with things like virtual machines, auto-scaling applications, managed database, cloud storage, APIs. And then all this 
in a, in a way to monetize through a marketplace. You know, Google Play is, now has thousands, if not hundreds of thousands, of applications for enterprises that not only provide internally uh, ways to get to that information, but potential monetization options. And then we really do want to in, in, ingrain this in people's heads that we, wanna, we want to replicate the experience so that people can work the way they live from anywhere on any device. So again, this is our infrastructure, but the secret sauce and the thing that we want to talk about that really differentiates us and what you've asked for is this administrative layer. All this is great, but we all know to get from consumer grade to enterprise grade, there are table stakes, core requirements. So management capabilities for users, service, and devices, being able to have robust reporting and notifications, do things like e-discovery, ar archiving directories and APIs. And this is what allows enterprise-grade deployments of consumer-grade technology and usage. So it's been fantastic this morning. I really appreciate your time and, and thank you. Um, hopefully, we've left you with, with some great vision and, and a really exciting, uh, some exciting ideas and a way to practically enable them in your business so that you can make your own companies work the way you live. So with that, I'm going to hand it back over to Richard, and, and thanks very much for your time.